Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Mr. Robinson has kindly asked the SU to lead this week's assembly um, and we'll be joined by a few more of the committee as we go on. Normally at this time of year we find ourselves stressed and worried with exams and even though they're cancelled perhaps now more than ever, we find ourselves stressed and worried with our situation. Um, and so I think it's really important that we look into this neat little passage that's tucked away in Matthew um, and I think we can really take some great teaching points from it. Today I'm reading out of Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33 and I'm reading in the NIV. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were t terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. In this passage we see Jesus walking on water um, and one of the most amazing things about this passage is that Peter, his disciple, walks on the water as well. Um, the, a few of the disciples are, are in a boat and they see this man out on the sea and he's walking towards them and they're terrified. Um, they, they cry out to him um, as if he's a ghost, they, they don't know what they're looking at um, and Jesus says, it's me, don't, don't be afraid. And what's amazing is that Peter responds with, Lord, if it's you, then tell me to come onto the water. And the only word that Jesus says is come. He invites Peter out onto something that he can't walk on, that he's never done before. Um, and Peter walks on water. Um, Jesus has that power. Um, he, he's in control of all things. Um, Peter didn't know that, um, but... Uh, in his faith, he, he, he stood out onto the water and began to walk. Although it didn't last long, um, Peter began to doubt. Um, he, he took his gaze off Jesus um, and he began to sink. Um, probably the most relatable part of this story to most of us. Um, we begin to sink when we take our gaze off Jesus. And when we begin to look at other things, the water starts to, to rise and we begin to start to go down. Um, this has a lot to say for us today and we can often find ourselves in a lot of different experiences in life, uh, whether that's in ups or downs, um, especially at the moment. Um, it may not always be clear what Jesus is doing. Um, a lot of the time we, we question what's happening. Um, Peter can't walk on water by himself. His focus was on calling out to the Lord. Peter trusted Jesus with his life so that even above stormy waters, Jesus sustained him. When we know Jesus and trust in him, we can draw closer to him even though our circumstances threaten to shake us and collapse in on us. We see that this was not in Peter's own power whatsoever. Peter did nothing but simply trust in Jesus in the situation. We see that when his focus left and his trust left Jesus, he got swamped by his surroundings. Similarly, we can look at the world today and become swamped in all the difficulties and stress-inducing events that aim to take our focus off of Jesus. And yet Jesus is always there, ready and willing to take us by the hand and bring us back to him. When we know we are safe in Jesus' hands, we can continue to draw close to him and enjoy the freedom from fear that brings. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the God of great things. 
You are the author and perfecter of your children. Ye you alone calm the storms in these days. Ye you alone hold the power to do the unthinkable. God, remind us that because of this, we can trust you. Remind us that we do not hold this strength on our own. God, we are feeble and easily led like sheep, but our trust is in a God that can do great and mighty things. God, help us to turn our eyes towards you. Help us to see that when we do the things of this world, they grow dim in the light of your glory and grace. God, we thank you for Jesus, the one who can pull us out of the water when we doubt so often. You are a God that cannot fail us. Help us to be more like the disciples in the boat and realise that you truly are the Son of God, the one worthy of our praise every day. We thank you for your powerful hand, which upholds us each day and comforts us in our darkness. We ask all this in your great and powerful name. Amen.